Today we meet Jeanette Ellis, author of Forbidden Rites and expert in the study of witchcraft. Jeanette explains the history of this subject and takes us to the historic town of Mistley, where Matthew Hopkins, the infamous Witchfinder General, began the persecution of British witches. Hi Jeanette, thank you so much for inviting us to your incredible home. Now, we've come today to talk about the history of witchcraft. Now, that's a subject that you've studied for many, many years, and you're an expert in the field on it. But we'd love to really go right back into the past and the history of witchcraft and where it started and, and really where, where it is today. So, if you can tell us the origins of witchcraft and how it all began. Witchcraft itself is sort of lost in the mists of time. Nobody can really put um, a finger on where it started. Uh, there are those that believe that it started early in 1900s, but that there are those that think that it's the remnants of the Druid religion. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to actually um, quantify it. And there, of course, there are. there's been persecution of when I say witches, it's a term that they label people who use magic for bad purposes, mm. which is not, of course, what it means today. Mm. It's just um, those who use magic to heal. Um, but certainly, even back in Roman times, those who used curses were persecuted. Mm -hmm. And to some extent, there's reasons behind that. Mm -hmm. It's like committing a murder to use to the excess mm. of um, magic so there were reasons for that but when we come into um, well 1480 onwards to 1700 which is when it really uh, kicked off in Europe um, and most people think of as the times of persecution the for witches times, yeah. <coughs> um, not so much the burning time, certainly not in England, oh, okay. that's a myth, oh, right. um, witches were hung in England, right. and but across Europe unfortunately, um, yes they were burnt. It sort of started um, in um, Holland and round and the areas, the worst was in South Germany, mm -hmm. southwest Germany. Um, and France, and of course, fueled by the Inquisition, um, there were spread, between yes, yes it, it spread it completely. Spread. It's there were between forty thousand to a hundred thousand people. So where did the word witch actually come from, and then the word witchcraft? Where what they're Anglo-Saxon. They okay. mean wise woman. Right. There's something totally different. Um, but when I say that. Um, the witchcraft was persecuted in ancient Rome. That's where people have used that word to describe people who use bad magic mm. or dark magic, black magic, if you would choose to use the term. Mm -hmm. So witchcraft was in England centuries ago. Uh, could you say that witchcraft was was used in, in Egypt? Would you say that the gods of old would use? I can certainly say witchcraft? that. Would you call it witchcraft? Whether you call it witchcraft, or of magic. course, it's a different thing altogether. Magic. You could certainly call it magic. Right. Yes, I mean, okay. Egypt and Egyptians were steeped in magic. Mm. The whole of their life revolved around it. Um, from getting up and uh, praying to Ra to the time to go to bed, there were different spells for different things. So the whole of their life was involved with magic, as were <coughs> every religion. So who were the gods of old, uh, hence Egypt, and other, other parts of the world? Who were they and what kind of magic would they have used? What would it have been called? Would it have a special name? No, magic was part of life. Just magic was magic? Yeah. I mean, um, as a Christian would think of prayers, so a worshipper of the uh, different gods and goddesses of ancient Egypt would just 
um, think of magic. It was just what they did. They also used prayers to their gods and goddesses, of course. But Would it this was be just limited life. to the high priests and priestesses, or was magic a part of? It was a part of everybody's life. Yeah, every day of life, of everyone. Most definitely. I mean, certainly um, worshipping the gods Mm -hmm. might well have um, been mainly for the priests and priestesses, Mm. uh, mainly priests. (laughs) Um, Certainly once you get to the higher levels uh, within a temple, the general public didn't enter temples in the same way as people would enter a church. the priests were there to do the work and the work was in worshipping the gods to make sure that they were worshipped to a standard <laughs> if you like mm-hmm. and that was their job and the general people um, their job was just to live and to um, do the different tasks that they needed to do whether that was to grow corn <coughs> or to ferry people along the Nile whatever your job was but a priest's job was to make sure that the gods looked favourably on Egypt. So they had to perform, perform that to its um, fullest, potential. fullest potential. So if we bring witch, witchcraft back to England, mm. now when people hear the word witch and witchcraft, they <laughs> tend to think of <laughs> bad things and people putting curses on things which we've just discussed. <clears throat> but what about the other side where, as you say, witch meant wise women? Mm. So if you can just tell us about the wise women and really why it went down the line where it went so wrong for them, where they were persecuted into being, sadly, these characters which were old hags and, you know, witches aren't, aren't like that. Um, most of the women who were deemed witches, whether they were old or whether they were young, were mainly ladies who knew... First of all, we must realise that everybody knew Herbcraft. Mm -hmm. Oh, everybody? Everybody (coughs) knew Herbcraft. Um, Let's face it, even most people today know a little Mm -hmm. of this and that on the way of herbs. Lavender on your pillow to make you sleep. Of course, yes. So you take it back then. Everybody knew a little something of it. Even if they'd only been to the wise woman and the wise woman had suggested using lavender, Mm -hmm. then you ain't going to forget it. You ain't going to go and pay again for the same information. (laughs) You learn fast. You learn fast. (laughs) And you pass it on to your children. And therefore, so everybody did know a little Mm. of um, the herbs. Yes, like aspirin. Yeah, uh, of course. Willow. willow. White willow bark. Um, But obviously, the. Um, wise woman in the village knew that little bit more. She knew how to use digitalis, which is foxglove. Okay. And you've got that, um, which affects the heart. So you need you just need the right amount. Exactly. You can't just say, "Oh, you yes, of course." <laughs> you use <laughs> foxglove. <laughs> it's not that simple. No. You have to know exactly what you're doing. Of. Well, it is like a doctor, isn't it? It is physician. indeed. Well, in fact, with digitalis. Um, that's where the doctors learnt about it, mm. was from the local wise woman. Mm. Uh, one do- I'm sorry, I don't remember the name, but this doctor in a certain village um, gave this woman £10 for the, all her knowledge on foxglove. It's him that has the statue in the village, and he is down in the medical box books as being the um, uh, founder and of the use of digitalis. Well, so he nicked her glory. <laughs> but he nicked it all from the wise woman down the road, yes. And this happened <coughs> over and over again. And of course, most wise women were wise enough not to tell anybody exactly what they used in their mixtures and things. Cunning women were had a certain um, specialness about them. They were obviously there to... Um, bring babies into the world and to lay out the dead. And so this gave them something, a certain power that the local priest didn't like Mm. because therefore they weren't completely under his control. They were also under the local cunning woman's control. If she said, 
the only way to cure your headaches is to walk around with a branch of rowan stuck in your hair they do that but if the priest therefore sort of said you know he had all these people with rowan in their hair he, didn't he like was it. annoyed he he didn't like them taking orders from other people because he'd probably want people just to go to church and pray yeah and it would and go away. this would be so obvious that so there was a bit of a there was definitely, she was sapping and taking his power, which um, I'm not over enamoured with, shall we say. So that was one of the reasons. The other reason, of course, was she agreed. Um, people were paid to go witch hunting, as Matthew Hopkins was. Mm. Um, first of all, set the scene. Uh, we had James the first. He was witchophobic and was um, persecuting witches, left, right, and centre. Why? Why did he start down that path? Did something he had a fear of off? witches. He had a fear <clears throat> of magic. Okay. When he crossed to um, Denmark uh, to take his bride and to bring her back. There was a big storm at sea and he blamed witches for causing the storm because mm. witches are known to use um, magic with weather but mainly this is for the good of crops and such mm. like it's not to um, drown the king at sea yes. <laughs> basically but um, his new wife's father was very anti-witch as well so she'd have been brought up in a court uh, that was very much um, against witchcraft mm. or rather against dark magic. We mustn't, we must distinguish the two really. Mm. Um, Who did practice dark magic then? I wonder if anybody did. Mm. But they just believed if someone had power that mm. it could be used yeah. as dark magic. So that, that was really the fear of it. Someone yeah, who it's the knew fear more of. than they did. They yeah. thought, well, if they know, I suppose it's like that old chestnut, isn't it? Knowledge is power. Yeah. And so anybody who... Anything that went before, wrong, suddenly it was the local it was witch's made. fault. Mm. Um, and this happens all over the world, unfortunately. It's always yes. somebody's fault. It's never the person involved involved's mm. uh, fault. If you can, as we're talking about uh, witchcraft or witches around the world, uh, what do you know about witchcraft in Africa? That's still going, uh, no, sorry, um, I nearly said it's still going on today, mm. but what I actually mean <coughs> was persecution of innocent people is still going on today. Mm -hmm. um, it's only a few years ago in Kenya, people were burnt to death women were burnt to death for witchcraft and um because you hear stories on the news don't you you do yeah people are still in these uh, villages and there are still witch finders in those villages mm. and they still go around and use whatever means they have decided um to choose who's a witch and who's not some of them by just um their special little stick if their little stick wiggles in their hand when they point it at somebody that's enough mm -hmm. to have them those people thrown out of the village and oh yes we'll pay this witch finder that's right so i suppose it was very lucrative wasn't don't it? we give a little clue here mm -hmm. to what actually is going on mm -hmm. these people are after wealth and they're after power and you know, who's the worst here? These poor innocent, usually women, because they're um, <clears throat> meeker and easier targets. Mm. And these men are... But half the people that were, were accused of <clears throat> witchcraft weren't, well, didn't even practice it. It was no. just someone, there was a grudge with and the finger was pointed. Yeah. Or they were easy targets. Mm. Old women, possibly... Uh, touch of senile dementia as we'd call it now or just 
old and unable to really fight back. The first one that Matthew Hopkins picked on was an old woman with only one leg. And this is the start of his career. And this wonderful title of Witchfinder General, he bestowed on himself. Mm. Although uh, he told everyone it was, you know, a government um, title that had been bestowed on him, nobody queried it. Mm -hmm. Nobody thought to go back to the government and ask, well, is there actually, you know, have you actually appointed a Witchfinder General? Because if anybody asked, the answer was no. So where was the areas that he operated in? Mainly in Essex and around there. Okay. Did he ever go abroad? He probably studied <coughs> abroad during his adolescence. Mm -hmm. uh, he could actually read and write, and in Latin as well. So he was quite learned. Mm -hmm. But there doesn't seem to be any... Um, nothing that we can trace of any university in this country. So he probably did study uh, abroad. Mm -hmm. uh, his mother was Huguenot or of Huguenot descent, rather. Um, so she may well have had relatives still in France or um, in the Low Countries, um, Holland and around there. Mm -hmm. So he may well have studied there. When people were accused of witchcraft, there was uh, people saying they had hallucinations of demons and things like that. Mm. What do you know of ergot, which caused things like that? Uh, Yes, of course, that can do. And yes, we did, of course, grow rye in this country. Mm. And um, ergot is a fungus that grows on rye and is then made into bread and is not affected by the oven. So it's still um, hallucinogenic that uh, quite could quite possibly have been. Mm -hmm. It was also, um, which is another thing, which um, the cunning woman would use because it also causes um, you to lose a child. Oh. So it, it would cause a miscarriage. So that was one way of um, regulating how many children you had. So people would very much eat ergot? Or well, they would something be with given it. it. They would go to the wise woman mm -hmm. and say, I am pregnant again. And she would give them some ergot mm. and that would cause the child to abort. That sounds very dangerous. Everything is dangerous. Mm. Um, but again, she knew the limitations. She knew exactly she what she was, was doing. She could also bring off a child that was overdue mm. and um, giving, you know, that might have actually have killed the mother if it had stayed any longer and grown any larger. So again, ergot would be um, given, wow. and the child would be born um, beautifully um, and with less pain for the mother. Another reason why the local priests didn't like the local cunning woman. They, Roman Catholic priests, as you know, you're not allowed to practice contraception. Um, so lots and lots of children. Hmm. Anybody who limited and the amount of children that a woman had. So again, we weren't pleased with this, were they? <laughs> control. What can you tell us about the, the book, The Mal Malus Milfocarum, is it? Mm, yes. Um, that is again, that's um, brought out by the Pope. First of all, they decided about seven, oh, I think it's nine five, mm -hmm. um, that they didn't believe in witchcraft. Okay. Witchcraft was a myth. Uh, anybody who believed in witchcraft, they were going against the Christian tenants. But then somehow or another, this got changed <laughs> somewhere along the line. And they set up the Inquisition and that went in search of witches. And um, How many people, because it wasn't just women, was it? It was no. men as well. Yes, yes. How many people do you think, if we know the records, I died here, <laughs> murdered. Ah, and I'm not sure exactly how many in England, but certainly overall, they reckon between 40,000 and 100,000 people. Mainly women, but not all by any means. What did the ancient start from? 
wears as long as you keep the shoulders you like what even from children yeah. children would be accused yeah, of, of witchcraft well they would just be if you like mm. thrown into the fire with the mothers oh dear that's just it's quite horrendous but then you you must also remember that although women were hung in england uh the Roman Catholics were burning the Protestants, and the Brot yeah. Protestants were burning the Roman Catholics. It really was. So I suppose, ages, really, yeah. we were very, very lucky. Mm. Uh, the witches uh, that they never ended up in the fire in England as well. They certainly mm. did, of course, in the continent. But mm. so um, it seems quite in incredulous to us that anything like that would actually um, be used. But um, so when. The, well, the wise women of the villages start to die out. That must affect people on a, on a medical level. Mm. I mean, yes, of people course. People start to die of all kinds of diseases if there mm. wasn't there someone there to look after them. How, yeah. did, how did that work out? Well, you're, you're decimating the population by burning women because women obviously then produce children. Um, you're, again, affecting it by taking away the educated, if you like. Um, perhaps they're, they're not schooled, but they are educated in the use of herbs and mm. doctoring and are the only doctors. Mm. Um, so again, you're lowering the chances of people's survival. Mm -hmm. What do you know of um, the male witches like Paracelsus and Agrippa? Because these people were quite high up in the profession of of magic, so they don't seem to be touched. They were like left alone. Um, when you come to Christian versions of magic, that's slightly different. Oh. Um, they were still walking a very, very fine edge, but they hadn't quite, if they were very lucky, <laughs> didn't quite tip over. Okay. You've got people like. Um, Nostradamus, mm -hmm. who predicted um, the death of Henry, the French Henry II, mm -hmm. um, and because the Queen about. Elizabeth the First used, oh yes, used, I think they were called seers then. Mm. Is that right? Is that correct? Seers. Yeah. So she had Doctor D, That's right. and he would. Um, well, actually, it was his friend Kelly mm. that actually did the scrying uh, mm. into uh, black mirrors, uh, which it, black mirrors are actually a slice of obsidian. Mm. And in fact, I can show you one. Now we've just mentioned, we've been talking about the scrying which um, Edward, uh, sorry, Dee and Kelly used yes. Yes, when they worked with uh, Queen Elizabeth I. Mm -hmm. But there are many other tools of the trade of witchcraft. If we could just talk about some of those now. In Harry Potter there's, there's the wit, there's, <laughs> there's his wand, isn't there? They all have a special wand and yes. uh, they all come from different trees. But witches actually do use ones, don't they? Oh yes, mm. yes. It's all part of magic, and um, ones have their place within um, witchcraft. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. So, if you can just tell me, um, how how is a, a wand chosen for? Does a witch choose a wand, or does someone else choose the no, wand? No, no. Preferably, the witch makes their own wands. Oh, okay. Um, not that um, I haven't been given some very beautiful ones over the years. Uh, that one was given to me uh, at one of my festivals. Wow. And a lovely lady just came up to me and said, I've made this for you, thank you very much. That and I keep beautiful. it just... It's uh, very delicate. It, it is. It's very beautiful and very delicate. Because um, they do come in all shapes and sizes they and do. materials. Yes, of course. This was actually made from one of the um, sticks from the Jack in the Green, which is why she gave it to me. Uh, my own one uh, that I use most of the time is um, a long, solid piece of crystal. Mm. So why uh, do witches use ones? 
I know it's a silly question, but <laughs> some people might not, feel, not know. There are different types of covens mm. and all of them have different um, approaches to magic. There are some that call the quarters, which are sort of guardians, um, by using a wand. Mm. There are obviously, they are also used in magic itself and in some parts of rituals are also conducted by using the wand. And it's not just ones, but there's many, many other things, if, if you can just explain. Mm. There's something called an athame, which is mm. um, a knife. Oh, dear. Mm. But the only thing is, it's not allowed to cut anything. So uh, certainly it isn't uh, anything um, nasty in any shape or form. In fact, it must not be allowed to touch blood. Okay, so what is it? It's, um, it's exactly the same as this Tibetan... Um, knife here, or you, rather, it's used in exactly the same way. Wow, <laughs> that's some piece. Yes, this um, is a knife of the goddess, and it's not used for sacrifice. It's a protection. Okay. And this is Tibetan, and an athami is used in exactly well, the same way. Well, I think I'd go running if I saw that. <laughs> Something came to me with that. But it, is to, it also protects you from dreams. Oh, ooh, very interesting. Or rather, as we would say, nightmares. Okay. Well, you hear about the dream catcher, which is supposed to yes, protect one North American dreams. Indian, so, yes. Yes, it is. So what's the equivalent? Apart well, this that, protects in, you. In, in, from in, it. So if, if someone came to a witch and said, I am having bad dreams, what hmm. would protect them from their dreams? We would probably... Um, witches would normally use um, some type of stone okay. these days. Um, tiger eye, for argument's sake, which is very protective. Mm. Or some of the black stones are also very protective. Like the obsidian? Like the obsidian, yes, indeed. Okay. Um, but um, athames are very similar mm. to, in their magical use, mm. are very similar mm. to the Tibetan knife. Okay. Now, we have to talk about the broomstick and the cauldron. <laughs> <laughs> we just have to. <laughs> um, the broomstick is obviously um, so well known mm -hmm. uh, in connection with witchcraft. And yes, it does. It is real. Um, it is used within witchcraft circles, but um, slightly differently in as far as it's used to um, clear the area of negative magic. So you'd sweep the area before conducting a ritual. It's also used to jump the broomstick. I'm sure that you've heard oh, that that's expression. Oh, right, song, isn't it? Yeah. Um, come, come on, little on baby, baby, let's, let's jump, jump the, the broomstick. broomstick. <laughs> that was, it was a leftover. It has been used all over the world um, as a symbol of, um, of joining of marriages. Mm outside the church. Yes, it is, isn't it? It is all over the world, the broomstick. It is, it's not yes. Just English. No. The British. It's <laughs> a symbol of uh, a combination of male and female energies. Ah, now, it has to be made from something special, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> Tell us about that. Well, um, the, the stick part mm. that is within uh, the, that's not the top end, but the the end within the branches has a phallus carved in it. Okay. And then the phallus is, uh, <laughs> it shall we say, forcibly <laughs> inserted into the bundle of twigs <laughs> okay. to actually make the. And what is the, like this, the shaft and then the, the twigs, so what are they mm. made of? They're made of different kinds of woods. Oh, so um, it doesn't have to be something specific? The shaft is usually made from ash. Okay. But, to be honest, that's because it's a nice, strong, straight piece of wood. Mm. It has energies, are very sun-orientated, which is, is male. And um, so, therefore, it has all sorts of good magic mm -hmm. locked within it. Um, the twigs... They can be, they have different meanings in different places, mm -hmm. but then you're also limited to what you can gather. Um, people didn't travel very far from mm -hmm. where they were. So you've got, 
this list of twigs that I can reel you off, but mm. the truth is they use what they could get. Okay. What do you know about the broomstick where it would send a message um, if the, the wise woman was at home or she was yeah. there visiting? Well, I, I that? tend to wonder whether this actually was true of all women rather than uh, oh, okay. wise women. You see, what they used to say is, if you were cleaning, you were using the besom within your home. Right, you had your house all neat and tidy. So you then put the besom outside your door to let your neighbours know that, okay, coffee mornings. <laughs> it's a modern call, <laughs> come for coffee. Yes, that's it. <laughs> You're all neat and tidy. Tea, I guess, in those days. <laughs> I think it probably could have been, yes. <laughs> Raspberry tea. Everything was all ready to receive visitors. Mm -hmm. So, um, personally, I don't think it applies just to witches. I think it was... Uh, it was for everyone. I think it was for everyone. I but believe. we have yes. no um, proof whatsoever. It, mm -hmm. it may have only been just to say that witches were at home and ready to s receive their witch friends. <laughs> so what can you but I often wonder oh, these days, with um, the new satellites and such like, and um, putting them straight on the the photos of houses on the web. Perhaps we could start putting their besoms outside their doors again. Oh, that's true. <laughs> and that's then we could just look at our friends and say, oh yes, the besom's outside, mm -hmm. so it's okay to nip round for coffee. That's a really good idea, actually. But people um, used to decorate, uh, the women used to decorate them, didn't they? Isn't oh they yes, yes. With the ribbons and yep. feathers and things. Yeah. What, what did that mean exactly? You'd decorate for different festivals and such ah, like. Right. And, um, well, Lots of things were decorated, mm. of course. But just before we go into talking about yeah. the festivals, if we can just talk a little bit about the cauldron, because oh. that is so used in, in witchcraft for different yes, reasons. Yes, it is, yeah. And it has certain symbolic meanings as well. Oh, it does. I mean, it's the womb of the goddess. It's the chalice. Um, it can be everything. But you must remember, again, that everybody had one mm. in those days. Mm -hmm. It's like the athame, the knife. Um, everybody had a knife to which they were used mm. all the time. Um, you know, men, women, doesn't matter. Mm. Uh, women would use it to cut up the meat for dinner. Mm -hmm. Men would use it, um, I don't know, to whittle sticks to do different things mm. that ever men did. <laughs> yeah, wicker work. <laughs> wicker work. <laughs> Very appropriate. <laughs> you know, uh, to cut twigs for thatching mm. and what have you. So they used the tools of witchcraft were very much tools that were about the house at mm. the time. Something we don't tend to sort of realise. We mm. think of a cauldron as being something special and it's quite expensive to get hold of nowadays. Mm. But for them it was their cooking pot. Yes. Um, you know, you stuck um, you made stew in it one day, you um, put something over the fire and roasted in it the next mm. day, it was what cooked absolutely everything. You put a lot of boiling water in it and had um, pots with different things mm. in the same cauldron mm -hmm. and you know you had so cooked all your different vegetables. General use, yes. It was totally general use. Mm. So of course you um, stirred up your potions and lotions in it as well mm -hmm. and um, if you were really rich well possibly you had two <laughs> and you kept one for dinner and one for your poisonous <laughs> potions and lotions <laughs> but if not you give it a good scrub and hope exactly. for the best <laughs> well, <I> hope so. <laughs> what can you tell us about puppets um they were um little people that you made mm. from cloth any old bits of cloth because again people weren't rich they didn't have great quantities of expensive uh, fabric that they could call on mm. and so you made it from what you had you stuffed it with straw um, I won't tell you how to bring it alive but there are different ways that different things that were added to it to do that um, and they weren't only used for cursing which is um, the modern misconception. Mm. Lots of times they were used um, to heal. Um, you could 
I don't want to go into too much detail about spells and such like. No, that's um, <clears throat> But you could use them in different ways for good magic. They're not only used for bad magic. Mm, mm. These are mandrakes, male and female. So a mandrake and a woman drake, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and they're dug from the ground when they're damp. Okay. And these particular this is a way of doing it, are then popped into a mould and they're left to dry within the mould and they take on the figure of a man or a woman. Ideally speaking, of course, um, the best of the mandrakes are um, when they're picked from the ground mm. they have a fem female or male form. Mm. But they are incredibly rare, exactly. even rare. How do they grow? I mean, how... Because I've heard of strange ways that they're supposed to have grown from dead men's seed. So, but I'm sure that's not the case. Oh, I'm sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> that came about in the 17th century okay. um, when it was suggested that um, when somebody was hung, yes. um, I don't know whether you can say this, but supposedly they ejaculated. Right. And the seed falling on the ground produced the mandrakes under... Mm, um, that's, that's what I read, actually. Mm. Yes, that's the seventeenth century. But apart from that, how how are they grown? Well, they're grown like any other plant. They come from North Africa, or from oh, Egypt, oh, right. and around there, um, okay. Tunisia, and along the coast there. Okay. Um, they were then came over and replanted in the south of France, and some of them, um, and from there they travelled around Europe. I mean, when I say travel, not personally. <laughs> <laughs> they were grown and taken around Europe. Yeah. And of course, this wonderful story of how they can't be taken from the ground without screaming. I've seen into... that again in Harry Potter. <laughs> That's the aim of son. <laughs> and they pulled up. Um, personally, I think that is because that made sure that people didn't go around uh, digging them many. up themselves. Yeah. But strangely enough, even if you go back as far as ancient Greece, okay. there is, I, I have this wonderful thing about how to um, dig up the mandrake. Mm. And you have to get your sword and you have to go around three times. Exactly the same as the witchcraft circle, strangely enough. Okay. This is right back into ancient Greece. Wow. And you make three circles with a sword around it and you chant to it about love. And all of this strange thing is you have to put wax in your ears. Now it doesn't say anything about a scream but it does say that you must put wax in your ears first. Oh, and it's right the spooky, way, isn't it? Right the way back there there is something about it. Now wow. although I've never done it with any mandrake and I've not done, I've got some pieces of um, white briony, like some white briony wands, but um, I've also um, got some uh, JLAP root from the Caribbean and this is very similar and used in much the same way. JLAP root is also High John the Conqueror root. Now pieces of that you put into a bottle and you add different oils. Mm. That does almost scream. Not physically but it screams mentally. Oh wow. When you put you can hear this big explosion of energy. Like an, I was gonna say a release of energy, energy from it. Now you've studied herbs, haven't you, quite a lot. Yes. Mm. So you do know your business. <laughs> <laughs> you are can I say a cunning woman or a wise woman? I think it's more appropriate. So you Thank know you. It's very you sweet. do know about <laughs> herbs. And I have seen, you have got an amazing, a, a, I can't say it. Apothecary? That's the one. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jeanette, if you can tell us about the Sabbaths, or the Witches' Sabbaths. Yes, of course. Um, there's eight of them a year. Mm -hmm. And they progress around the year, um, reflecting the farming, basically, um, okay. cycle of the year. So you, you start off 
or end, whichever you prefer to put it, with Halloween. And that's a, a celebration. It's a celebration of death, basically. Mm. It's the time we remember those that we loved and lost. Okay. And they're invited back to the witch's circle. Mm. And then it goes on through the year to, um, to Yule. And all the solstices and equinoxes, for some witches, are god festivals, with the ones in between those being the goddess festivals. Okay. So uh, uh, then there's in bulk, and that um, would be, in the olden times, would be a time when you would bless the plough and it's a smithing festival and so many witches bring in whatever work they actually do do not everybody obviously these days is a farmer or mm. um, a smith so whatever you do it's time to bring a little remembrance of what you do into the circle and ask for some a bit of good luck with that for the rest of the year yes. because obviously without that none of us can do very much at all <laughs> True. We all need a bit of that. We'll so need a bit there's of cash. different <laughs> gods, isn't there? There's like the uh, old king and the holly king. If you can yes. explain about those. Um, they are the summer and the winter variations for some witches. Um, others have a single god that goes through the year and ages, and at Yule is sacrificed, or gives up his life voluntarily to be sacrificed. Um, and then he's reborn and starts the okay. year off again. Is this so? This goes up to the winter solstice. Oh, that's the winter mm. solstice that you'll okay. yes. So a lot of the festivals, which are the pagan festivals, mm. have then been incorporated into like the Christianity. Oh yes. 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 So if you can explain which ones cross over. All of them. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Halloween. Oh, sorry. Halloween. Halloween. Um. Samhain, of course, is the old Celtic name for it. Okay. Halloween is the modern, uh, what is sometimes used mm. by most people. But, of course, the uh, Christian one wording is all hallows. Oh, right. Um, for Yule, which is the winter solstice, mm -hmm. uh, the Christians call it Christmas. Mm -hmm. Even though, of course, um, they put, they have no idea when Jesus was born, but they decided to stick it on that particular day because that was the day of the Invincible Son. Mm. It's the day, a few days after um, the actual solstice, mm. the sun holds in the sky. If you're a farmer and you see it on the horizon, mm it will be it will appear for a few days to actually think about whether it's going to grow big again and become summer is that where it sort of stays um static for one of the better yes. way for about three days yes yes okay. well it's almost an entire week a few days before mm. it's at the solstice and then a few days after and it's there and it thinks about it for a week mm. almost because this is also and very important to druids isn't it it's yes the indeed main point with the druidism mm. Mm. and then it, it passes this point and it starts to grow again yes so christmas day is the first day of the invincible sun mm. as it starts to turn and grow and that was when lots and lots of different festivals were celebrated mm. um apollo um I can't remember at this moment. Well, it's interesting you should say that um, because I was doing an interview with Peter Joseph mm. and uh, I can't remember the correct terminology, but he explains how many different religions come under mm. the same kudos as the sun going down and the birth of the new god. Yeah. So it is incredible. There is quite a few going mm. back in history. Oh, Krishna, yes. I think, was one as yes, well. Yeah. Um, Apollo and mm. many many others can't bring them to the top of my head at the moment but there was quite a lot actually yeah and I was quite amazed I mean I knew about Druids but I was amazed how many and how far it goes back mm. well it's such a momentous thing mm. in the lives of every country 
around the world. Mm. When you see the sun hovering, will we get a summer? Mm -hmm. If we don't get a summer, the crops won't grow. Yes. Therefore, like the Vikings thought, we would go down into um, a, a winter that lasted mm -hmm. forever yes. if it doesn't start to return. Mm -hmm. And they held their breath until they saw it start to, to return and the sun to start to climb the sky again. Mm -hmm. So it meant so much. It meant you lived or it meant you died. Mm -hmm. There was a real meaning to it. So everything was based around the sun, mm -hmm. the birth of the sun coming back. Yeah. What about the Mayans and the Aztecs? I mean, would you class that as, it, well, maybe as a kind of magic, not necessarily witchcraft, but... Uh, certainly they had their magic, yes. Mm. And they also um, obviously worship the sun uh, in hot countries. It's yes. even more important um, than it is uh, in our colder countries mm. in some ways. It's there. It's so much yes. um, beating down on you that you can't miss it. Mm. And um, unless you sort of uh, placate it and ask for something a little bit less strong, then you, you know, you'll frizzle and you will. <laughs> Burn to say the least. So people think when they hear of witches and witchcraft and magic, I suppose they do instantly bring to mind the picture of a witch. But as we say and we're talking about now, it just goes back into so many different cultures and goes back thousands of years. The god of the witches, um, you can trace it back mm. to the earliest of the gods worshipped in the world. Mm. Um, it was there at the beginning. Mm. I feel he'd be there at the end. Mm -hmm. If we can just talk a little bit about the goddess. Mm -hmm. um, the in goddess all, is in quite... All forms, yes. Yes, she's quite a mainstay of witchcraft. Mm. Um, she's the maiden, mother and crone. Mm. A woman in all her three different aspects her most important times of her life. Maiden, obviously, young children, um, up to the time, if you like, um, when she gets her first period. Mm. Um, because obviously in, in the olden days, that was much later than it is these days you you wouldn't get it to 18 or 19 and by then she would probably already be married mm. um, and then the mother um, and at the end the crown um, and we have different colors for each of the goddesses we have white for the maiden and red for the mother and black for the crown okay now there all many different goddesses, aren't there? There's not just one mm. goddess that yeah. you think of. And uh, if you can talk, talk about the different goddesses that people pray to, I don't actually personally call it praying to. Uh, okay, I call it sorry. working with. Okay. They don't take them as um, being like the Christian god and needing placating and such like. They're people um, of much higher intelligence abilities whatever you like to mm -hmm. say, that actually will lean down and help. So there, is, there isn't the same we're not worthy, we're not worthy yes. type of aspect. So you're not they don't by them. In no mm -hmm. way at all. Mm -hmm. They don't go down on their knees to mm -hmm. their goddess. Mm -hmm. They stand up tall and strong like, you, like a mother, uh, like a child reaches for mother. Oh. So you stand up to your goddess. <laughs> um, it's only mummy upstairs, so you know, you, you're not... You don't have to worship mummy. <laughs> <clears throat> now, I can't end this session uh, without us talking about the moon. <laughs> I must talk about the moon. <clears throat> and all the different moons that there are. Mm -hmm. And the phases, if you can just tell us about that. Yes. Um, there's the waxing moon, which is, belongs to the maiden. A small little slither of moon in the sky. And then you come to the full moon of the mother goddess, the strong moon that guards and pulls the tides of both the sea and of magic. 
and then you have the waning moon belonging to the crone. And this is the time when you do magic for divination and taking away. And by that I mean taking away of pain and taking away of illness. Would that be useful getting rid of things out of one's life? Mm -hmm. mm. You could also use it for that, yes. Mm. But magic's never used or should be never used for harm. No. no. Um, the Wiccans have a saying, do what thou wilt if it harm none. Mm. It's very, very difficult to do anything bad that doesn't harm anybody. Yes, that's very true. What's so, the rule of three? If you were to do something as stupid as to curse somebody, then you'll get it back three times over. But of course, if you do nice magic, like healing and such <laughs> I was like, going to say, do you get the benefits? <laughs> you do indeed. <laughs> you have to help someone across the road. <laughs> it comes back three fold. Yep. Oh, that's always good to know. So hopefully everybody's going to be rushing out doing a good deed tomorrow. I hope. So. Be nice. It's <laughs> like that. Film, isn't it? Pay it forward. <laughs> Jeanette, if you can tell us about the different groups uh, of modern witchcraft today, because it's not you can't just lump it all in one <laughs> pot together. Uh, there are not even in one cauldron. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the Alexandrian and there's Wicca. There's Alexandrian and Gardnerian. Mm -hmm. They form a combined unit now, which is called Wicca. But there are other groups outside that. Mm -hmm. they, they don't get so much publicity but um, um, they still exist and okay. we and they so charge along quite happily. Who, who Gerald Gardner was and Alex Saunders? Yes, um, Gerald um, learnt his craft from Dorothy Clutterbuck. That's a name. It's <laughs> a name and a half actually <laughs> and he wrote his book High Magic Aid. This he wrote before uh, the repeal of the Witchcraft Act so it's written as a story rather than as ah. reality. Mm -hmm. um, he was he was a long while. He lived a long while in Malaya mm -hmm. and around there, and was very interested in the folklore before returning to England. Um, to, which, as I say, started st uh, studying under Dorothy Clutterbuck. Mm. Uh, Learnt her form of magic. There's lots of people who argue that it started with Dorothy. Okay. Um, whether it did or whether it didn't, mm -hmm. proof, no proof is not actually proof. Mm. Um, it wouldn't stand up in a court of law. Mm. Um, so I tend to think, um, I do a lot of gianting. I know this is outside the subject. Mm -hmm. um, and that used to be done in every town and in every festival and yet there's about six recorded incidences from medieval times of giant of giants that's all there is recorded oh. so you've got witchcraft which is an undercover um, obviously has to be done quietly um, it's hardly surprising that nobody wrote anything down mm. for a start they couldn't write Mm. They, they, they could read more than we give them credit for mm. but writing was considered another skill entirely mm -hmm. and the only way you could get something written was going along to the local priest and asking him to write it down for you mm. so guess what, they didn't do it oh, right. so this is my theory um, whether it's true or not, I don't know there isn't anything that's been traced as yet mm -hmm. so it would be th things would be passed on in, in stories as well Yes, and by word of mouth. The Druids, for argument's sake, used to um, teach everything. There was nothing written down there. Even though a lot of them could write Latin, mm -hmm. they didn't write anything down. Mm -hmm. It was against uh, their teachings to do so. Everything had to be learnt by rote. And it's the same with witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Again, everybody had to learn what you needed to know. Because didn't Nostradamus have a lot of scrolls and that had to be hidden? Yeah, mm -hmm. because he needed to put things in code mm. uh, because of the Inquisition. Mm. Was He was arrested at one time. Mm. What do you know of your research of Alistair Crowley? Um, he was 
a very intelligent man that was actually a very, very, very well-known climber. Climber? Climber. Okay. <laughs> he was the first person to climb K5. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, and he was very, very well studied in every type of magic, Greek, Roman, everything oh, okay. that you could possibly study. And he tried a lot of the old rituals out. Mm. Unfortunately, as far as I'm concerned, I'm sure that there's a lot of Crowley um, followers that will disagree with me. I think when he got into drugs and such at a later age, I think he lost it. Okay. And it, I think it's a great pity. Mm. He was a great student of magic early on. Because mm -hmm. was it him who created the Order of the Golden Dawn? He had a lot to do with it, yeah. Mm. But he didn't create that? Um, there were a few people involved. Okay. Now, witchcraft is very popular in the culture today, and because of Harry Potter, mm. it's really brought it to the forefront. But there is such a thing called Pebble, isn't there? Yes. So can you tell us about Pebble, please? Pebble liaises with the government, and we've got the um, oath in court changed, mm -hmm. so that you don't necessarily need to affirm or swear on the Bible. Okay. You can swear by your deity. And this is also, of course, helps Hindus and other ethnic groups mm. who don't wish to uh, affirm or obviously to swear on the Bible. Uh, we're now discussing with them um, about uh, how we can be best represented in schools mm. when they um, deal with uh, different types of religions mm -hmm. and how they would best represent witchcraft, or paganism rather, mm. and its many little branches. Mm. Because we're the seventh largest religion in the country now. That is amazing. Thanks to the census. <laughs> but you think it could be higher, don't you? I think it could be mm. a lot higher. I don't think we'd probably go up the scale very far, mm. but possibly up to the six, yeah. Because I think some people... Because we, we wouldn't touch the really know. major religions mm. yet. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> a few more Harry Potter films, maybe. You and you know. never know. <laughs> Much to the government's surprise, they found that 40,000 people put down some form of uh, pagan religion. 40,000. 40, wow. And that doesn't include those who put Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> of which a great deal of them actually are pagans, but didn't want to tell the government that they <laughs> were. So they put down Jedi. Well, I'm not surprised if, you know, we're talking about the persecutions and I think still people are still worried about that, aren't they? Yeah, oh, there are lots of people who worry labeled. about their jobs. Especially I mean, in America, only last year somebody lost their job over such a, a stupid thing as um, they did some sleight of hand conjuring tricks. What, are, up there? In, up in there. the Bible Belt in America, yeah. Oh. And for that he lost his job. Mm. So today... I guess people are quite wary about really stating who they are and what they do because there's so many people probing into people's private affairs and it's done Probably. quite easily these days. Yeah. So I'm not surprised if people do pra practice the craft, witchcraft, yeah. that they don't put that down in black and white. And because of what we were talking about in Africa where yeah. people are still murdered for these mm -hmm. these things. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're going to go on a little journey and we're going to see the haunting ground or stomping ground of Matthew Hopkins, who yes. was the witch finder general. Yes. And we're good, just going to have a look at the place where mm. he was and where he did put a lot of women yes. and men and mm. some children mm. to their deaths. Mm. Right, Jeanette, if you can just tell us the history behind the Thorn Inn. The original of this inn, um, it lasted about 100 years. This one was built in 1700. Um, was owned by Matthew Hopkins. He actually bought it um, with money that he got from his father's will. Mm. And this is one of the places he used to walk 
um, his subjects. Oh, right. The, both men and women. Mm-hmm. This is Sherry Singleton. Sherry is the owner of the Thorn Inn and she's very kindly going to show us the very old part of the inn and tell us something about it. Well, welcome. Uh, this is our, um, our wine store and it's alleged that uh, this, is th- this is part of the original foundations of the building and this is the part, part of the original um, building that Matthew Hopkins lived in. Mm. Um, and it has been documented in Malcolm Gaskell's book, Witchfinders, that uh, Matthew Hopkins did indeed run um, the thorn mm-hmm. in Missley um, during his lifetime and possibly held some of his trials here. Okay. Do you know how old this part is itself? Um, I just know that there are some original foundations, so I could, it, you know, could go back to the 1500s. I don't know, mm-hmm. but the um, the new building is Georgian. Okay. Do you, uh, just for the record, have you ever had any spooky experiences down here? Um, not, not down here, as such. Um, upstairs, when we were doing the refurb, we had a couple of strange experiences uh, where doors would be locked, doors that didn't have keys, actually, mm. and I was the only person that could open them. Oh. <laughs> so uh, I don't know what that, that's so supposed to mean. So there was something a little bit weird going on. <laughs> could be. I don't know. Um, my big builders couldn't open the door, but I was... I was the only one that could do it, and oh. it, it, it really um, worried them. <laughs> do you know if any of the other staff, just for the record, has had any strange happenings? Um, we've had a couple of things with glasses flying across the bar with, mm. for, you know, no way to explain that. Mm. I mean, it could be vibration, but um, I'm not too sure. Um, the girls upstairs might, uh, okay. might have some stories, but... Uh, I've just had a fa- very happy vibe through this building. Well, I've been here five years mm-hmm. now, so I, I, I think it's got a very good, good vibe. Mm-hmm. As legend ha- has it, this is supposed to be the day when he haunts this area. Oh right, one of oh, the wow. roads. Yes, yeah, so we have come today especially okay. just to Great. do some Well, film. I keep my eyes peeled. And <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Sure. And you're going to let us go and visit one yes. of the rooms where yes, yes, it is yes. known to be a little bit unusual. Yes, yes. Thank you very okay, much. Sure. So appreciate your okay. time. Thank you. My pleasure. Now we've come to one of the rooms uh, inside the Thorn Inn where Matthew Hopkins actually brought the victims that he accused of witchcraft and he actually did some horrendous torture in here. Can you explain what actually went, went on behind the scenes? Mm. Well, technically, of course, he's, he wasn't allowed to torture anybody. Oh, okay which uh, didn't mean to say he didn't invent his own way of doing things. Um, After the swimming down at the uh, the pond, he'd bring them back up here and then look for witch marks, which he'd do with a long pin, and stick these into any mole or any um, non-perfect part of your body, looking Mm. for an area that, according to him, uh, didn't make you scream in pain as he stuck this great needle it into sounds you. sounds horrendous. It does indeed. Mm. And obviously, by the time that they'd finished with people, they were too um, much in pain. Pain. Yeah. You've got blood issuing out from all these different spots that they've already tried. You don't almost care. And by the time... And he would carry on and on until he found mm. something where you were mm. just too tired, tired and ill to actually complain. Where once more he did it, and that was your witch spot. This is where, of course, he in- insisted you, your familiar fed both on your psychic energy mm. and on your blood. Then, sometimes beating his poor victims both men and women, though more women than men. He'd then tie them onto a stall so that you're sitting cross-legged for 24 hours. So you can imagine how the limbs cramp Mm. and, um, to say the least, pins and needles. Uh, And then it obviously gets worse and worse from there. That is excruciating, isn't it? That can be excruciatingly Mm. painful. 
then he'd walk you. And by that, he means that they had a person on either side supporting you. And you were walked up and down these rooms mm. for not only hours, but days and nights. And he would change the people that held you up, walking you until your feet bled. And then, when you were completely dazed, you had no idea what was going on. And we're talking about old people mainly. Why do you think he had such a hatred and and did this? Why, why was well, that? Well, he was born at a time when James I was on the throne. Now, he was um, definitely, my own little word is witchophobic. Mm. He had um, the Bible re-translated from Latin. And there, to please him, there's this little bit saying that never suffer a witch to live. Mm. The actual wording on the original Greek and Hebrew were never suffer a poisoner to live. Ah, so it was changed. It was changed to suit him, Mm -hmm. to please him. He already knew what it contained originally, Mm -hmm. of course, because Mm -hmm. he was a learned and educated man. So Matthew Hopkins was born at this time when there was this big um, hoo-ha about witchcraft when James I went over to get his bride um, there was a big storm blew up at sea and he blamed witches and lots and witches died because of this storm at sea of course not everybody that was accused of witchcraft actually practiced and probably most didn't most mm-hmm. were just old people that were picked on either out of jealousy or to get their property Yes, or, I have read that. Yes, yeah, or like Matthew Hopkins mm, just means. to be paid. Mm. Because he was paid quite a lot of money every time he caught witches. How do you, do you know how much he was paid, say, At per one witch place, or group? £23. Can you imagine how much That's that... A lot of... Is that per, per person? No, no, that was what he took from oh. um, Swan, Swanley. Not sure quite. But that... In those days, that's still a lot that of money. That was a lot of money. That's a You're talking about um, wages of a dozen people for the mm. year. Mm. And he was doing taking this per week. He had um, letters. I mean, he was quite an educated man. Mm. He could write in both English and Latin. Yes. And this probably he learnt abroad. Mm-hmm. Um, his mother was of Hug- Huguenot descent. And possibly they sent him um, to one of the Huguenot countries mm. and he went to university there because he didn't, not that anybody's found any connection with the university in England. So he was quite educated. He knew what he was doing of. He was, he died at 27 of TB. Wow. So he was quite a young man when he started. So he actually set out with the intention of making this a career just to make money yes I mean his brother was had a ministry and was thrown out of that for unattendance to his flock so the whole family was a little um shady perhaps not shady but (laughs) certainly let's say work shy anyway Mm, mm. Matthew Hopkins Witchfinder General that's a title he gave himself Oh. Um, Parliament, although he claimed it was handed down from Parliament, actually, when they checked, when somebody actually bothered to check, they found out that it, he was something he completely made up himself. Was he the only one called mm. Witchfinder General? Yeah, because there wasn't such a, a post. A title. Mm. What are the areas apart from round here that did he mm. go and All through Essex. Okay. All of the villages. Um, I was going to say there's a lovely letter. Uh, it's hardly that. Um, it says, I'm going to come to your village and I will find your witches. And if you don't pay me, well, I won't come. Therefore, you can keep your witches. So is, That's is basically that, what it bowed down to in a much more that lighter now? terms. I um, don't know. Uh, but that did exist, yes. Yeah, it, it exists. It still exists today. If you could just tell me about the witch trials that took place, the ducking. 
Yes. Uh, it's called Swimming. Swimming. Swimming the Witches. Oh. And it, the idea was invented by James I, our dear old James, um, our witcher-phobic. He decided that because witches had rejected the baptism, which of course is water, so the water will then reject them. So this is why if they float, they are guilty of witchcraft. Mm. And if they sink, if the water will allow them to, um, then they're fine. But they drowned. But they, you know, some of them just happened to drown. Well, there we are, as far as they're concerned. Mm. They were only old women and unproductive members of society. So do we care? Anyway, um, that's not me, of course. I'm referring to them. Um, so what they used to do, but Matthew, of course, improved on this. He tied the right thumb to the left toe and the left thumb to the right toe so that they're tied like this. They were then tied with what uh, ropes around the waist and they went to either side of the pond. And these poor old women, some of them uh, suffering senile dementia, being awful, were pushed into the water. Mm -hmm. So, of course, if he wanted them to float, the men on either side just pulled the ropes tight. And there was nothing that the poor person, you know, innocent or guilty, mm. was absolutely irrelevant. Mm -hmm. They floated. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, proved as a witch. So then it went on for more torture. It went on to the torture. Oh, I bet, this, I bet some of them just them wished that they could just end it there because they must have known what was coming next. Mm. If they were floating, yeah. they knew that was just the beginning. Yeah. Uh, it must have been awful. In the inn, obviously it's been mm. built up over the years. Mm. Mm. Now, do you know of any people who've had any sort of strange experiences here? Well, actually I have. Okay. I visited it, oh, I suppose about 10 years ago. And um, it was a beautiful, hot summer's day. Unlike we've been filming today and this room and some of the others up here were absolutely freezing wow i mean it's a cold day so it's not surprising that it's chilly in here today mm. but on a boiling hot day absolutely freezing that is strange and you could feel it as you walk through the door it sort of chilled you to the soul mm. and then when we were having um dinner in the restaurant downstairs lovely little uh, inn you could see the curtains blowing out of some of the rooms blowing out of the rooms oh that is strange it was cold mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think some of the other staff have had some yes. strange experiences doors have yeah. locked and doors have slammed and yes. glasses have <laughs> jumped off from the bar downstairs mm. we were told I wonder if that was through Matthew or the people that was here what do you think Oh, I think it's got to be the people that were here. Mm. They must have... You must be giving out so much psychic energy. Giving out a negative imprint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you you're not so? trying to hurt the people that are here now, but it must be just an it explosion must have just left like a shock of wave. pain, yeah. really. Mm. Must have been awful for them. Mm. Terrible. Now, we're actually going to move on from here and we're actually going to visit the uh, area where he is actually supposed to have walked on this day actually yes and we're going to see his uh, area where he's buried his grave mm. gravestone area mm. Mm. if you can just tell us how matthew hopkins himself came to his end yes he was operating as witchfinder general for about three years mm -hmm. during that time he killed 240 men and women okay but he, after three years, died an early death at 27 with TB, or consumption as they would have called it. Mm. There's documented proof that he died on the 12th of August, 1647, of TB. Mm -hmm. So we do know that uh, where he ended his days, and at quite an early age. Yes, it sounds like um, his karma came back yeah. to take him. It does indeed. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Jeanette, I want to thank you so much for all of your time that you've given it's us okay. and your knowledge on the subject uh, of witchcraft and Matthew Hopkins. It's been absolutely extraordinary. Thank you. ...of the uh, different gods and goddesses of ancient Egypt would just um, think of magic. It was just what they did. They also used prayers to their gods and goddesses, of course. But would this it was be just limited life. to the high priests and priestesses? Or was magic a part of... It was a part of everybody's life. Gonna, yeah, every yeah. day of life, of everyone. Most definitely. I mean, certainly um, worshipping the gods mm -hmm. might well have um, been mainly for the priests and priestesses. Mm. Uh, mainly priests. <laughs> um, certainly once you get to the higher levels... Uh, within a temple. The general public didn't enter temples in the same way as people would enter a church. Mm. Um, the priests were there to do the work and the work was in worshipping the gods to make sure that they were worshipped to a standard, <laughs> if you like, mm -hmm. and that was their job. And the general people, um, their job was just to live and to um, do the different tasks that they needed to do, whether that was to grow corn or <coughs> to ferry people along the Nile, whatever your job was. But a priest's job was to make sure that the gods looked favourably on Egypt. So they had to perform, perform that to its um, fullest, potential. fullest potential. So if we bring witch, witchcraft back to England, mm. now when people hear the word witch and witchcraft, they tend to think of well, bad things and people putting curses on things which we've just discussed. <clears throat> but what about the other side where, as you say, witch meant wise women? Mm -hmm. So if you can just tell us about the wise women and really why it went down the line where it went so wrong for them, where they were persecuted into being sadly these characters which were old hags and you know witches aren't, aren't like that um, most of the women who were deemed witches whether they were old or whether they were young were mainly ladies who knew if, first of all we must realise that everybody knew Herbcraft mm -hmm. oh everybody everybody <coughs> knew Herbcraft uh, cure your headaches is to walk around with a branch of rowan stuck in your hair. They'd do that. But if the priest therefore sort of said, you know, he had all these people with rowan in their hair, <coughs> he, didn't he like was it. annoyed. He, he didn't like them taking orders from other people. Because he'd probably want people just to go to church and pray yeah. that it would go and away. This would be so obvious. That, so there um, was a bit of a... There was definitely... She was sapping and taking his power, which um, I'm not over enamoured with, shall we say. So that was one of the reasons. The other reason, of course, was she agreed. Um, people were paid to go witch hunting, as Matthew Hopkins was. Mm. Um, first of all, set the scene. Uh, we have James the First. He was witchophobic and was um, persecuting witches left, right, and centre. Why? Why did he start down that path? Did something he had a fear of witches. He had a fear <clears throat> of magic. Okay. When he crossed to um, Denmark. Uh, to take his bride and to bring her back. There was a big storm at sea and he blamed witches for causing the storm because mm. witches are known to use um, magic with weather but mainly this is for the good of crops and such mm. like. It's not to um, drown the king at sea yes. <laughs> basically. But um, his new wife's father was very anti-witch as well so she had been brought up in a court uh, that was very much um, against witchcraft mm. or rather against dark magic we mustn't we must distinguish the two really 
Um, who did practice dark magic then? I wonder if anybody did. Mm. But they just believed if someone had power that mm. it could be used yeah. as dark magic. So that, that was really the fear of it. Someone yeah, who was for witches. Times, yeah. Um, <coughs> not so much the burning time, certainly not in England. Oh, okay. That's a myth. Oh, right. Um, witches were hung in England. Right. And, but across Europe, unfortunately, um, yes, they were burnt. It sort of started um, in um, Holland and round and the areas. The worst was in South Germany, mm. southwest Germany. Um, and France, and of course, fueled by the Inquisition, um, there it were between it. yes, it, it spread it completely. Spread. It's there were between forty thousand to a hundred thousand people. So where did the word witch actually come from, and then the word witchcraft? Where what they're Anglo-Saxon. They okay. mean wise woman. Right. There's something totally different. Um, but when I say that. Um, the witchcraft was persecuted in ancient Rome. That's where people have used that word to describe people who use bad magic mm. or dark magic, black magic, if you would choose to use the term. Mm -hmm. So witchcraft was in England centuries ago. Uh, could you say that witchcraft was was used in, in Egypt? Would you say that the gods of old would use? I can certainly say witchcraft? that. Would you call it witchcraft? Whether you call it witchcraft, or of magic. course, it's a different thing altogether. Magic. You could certainly call it magic. Right. Yes, I mean, okay. Egypt and Egyptians were steeped in magic. Mm. The whole of their life revolved around it. Um, from getting up and uh, praying to Ra to the time to go to bed, there were different spells for different things. So the whole of their life was involved with magic, as were <coughs> every religion. So who were the gods of old, uh, hence Egypt, and other, other parts of the world? Who were they and what kind of magic would they have used? What would it have been called? Would it have a special name? No, magic was part of life. Just magic was magic? Yeah. I mean, um, as a Christian would think of prayers, so a worship. Today we meet Jeanette Ellis, author of Forbidden Rites and expert in the study of witchcraft. Jeanette explains the history of this subject and takes us to the historic town of Mistley, where Matthew Hopkins, the infamous Witchfinder General, began the persecution of British witches. Hi Jeanette, thank you so much for inviting us to your incredible home. Now, we've come today to talk about the history of witchcraft. Now, that's a subject that you've studied for many, many years and you're an expert in the field on it. But we'd love to really go right back into the past and the history of witchcraft and where it started and, and really where, where it is today. So if you can tell us the origins of witchcraft and how it all began. Witchcraft itself is sort of lost in the mists of time. Nobody can really put um, a finger on where it started. Uh, there are those that believe that it started early in 1900s, but that there are those that think that it's the remnants of the Druid religion. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to actually um, quantify it. And there of course there are, there's been persecution of, when I say witches, it's a term that they label people who use magic for bad purposes, mm. which is not of course what it means to die. Mm. It's just um, those who use magic to heal. Um, but certainly, even back in Roman times, those who used curses were persecuted. Mm -hmm. And to some extent, there's reasons behind that. Mm -hmm. It's 
like committing a murder to use to the excess mm. of um, magic. So there were reasons for that, but when we come into um, well, 1480 onwards to 1700, which is when it really uh, kicked off in Europe, um, and most people think of as the times of persecution. Um, let's face it, even most people today know a little mm -hmm. of this and that on the way of Lavender herbs. Lavender on your pillow to make of you course, sleep. Of yes. course, yes. So you take it back then, everybody knew a little something of it. Even if they'd only been to the wise woman and the wise woman had suggested a using... Remedy lavender mm -hmm. then well, you ain't going to forget it you ain't going to go and pay again That's for the true. same information <laughs> you learn fast you learn fast <laughs> and you pass it on to your children and therefore so everybody did know a little mm. of um the herbs yeah it's like aspirin yeah of course aspirin, willow, willow white willow bark um but obviously the um wise woman in the village knew that little bit more she knew how to use digitalis, which is foxglove. Okay. And you've got that um, which affects the heart, so you need you just need the right amount. Exactly. You can't just say, oh, you, yes, of course. <laughs> Go <laughs> use foxglove. <laughs> it's not that simple. No. You have to know exactly what you're doing. Of. Well, it is like a doctor, isn't it? It it's is efficient. indeed. Well, in fact, with digitalis, um, that's where the doctors learnt about it, mm. was from the local wise woman. Mm. Uh, one doc I'm sorry I don't remember the name but this doctor in a certain village um, gave this woman ten pound for the, all her knowledge on foxglove it's him that has the statue in the village and he is down in the medical box books as being the um, uh, founder and of the use of digitalis well, so he nicked her glory. <laughs> but he nicked it all from the wise woman down the road yes and this happened <coughs> over and over again and of course most wise women were wise enough not to tell anybody exactly what they used in their mixtures and things cunning women were had a certain um, specialness about them they were obviously there to um, bring babies into the world and to lay out the dead and so this gave them something, a certain power okay. that the local priest didn't like mm. because therefore they weren't completely under his control they were also under the local cunning woman's control if she said the only way 